So, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Ich wünsche euch einen wunderschönen guten Abend. Ich mache jetzt mal schnell noch alle Chats zu. So, damit da nichts mehr abgeht im Moment. Wir sind jetzt aktuell um die 30 Teilnehmer. Ähm, ich hätte mir ein bisschen gerne mehr gewünscht. Aber ähm, wenn nicht da ist, hat Pech. Ähm, jede seine Chance, live dabei zu sein. Ähm, in einem offiziellen Zoom-Call, wo ein amerikanischer Go-Life-Educator am Start ist. Ähm, mein Name ist Robert Rothkanz, ich komme aus der Schweiz. bin so der Mr. Deutscher, Mr. Harmonix. Ich äh, bin Inhaber der Harmonix-Austauschgruppe. Habe auch Ignite und Pro Harmonix mit ähm, entwickelt. Und wie gesagt, ihr habt den Link, weil ihr im richtigen Chat am Start seid. In der großen Harmonix-Austauschgruppe. Und es ist mir eine sehr große Ehre, euch heute Abend hier zu begrüßen. Ähm, bevor ich dann auf Englisch wechsle, ähm, habe ich euch einen sehr, sehr speziellen Zoom-Call ähm, organisiert. Und zwar mit einem amerikanischen Forex Pro Go Live Educator, dem Mr. Chance Gonemer. Ähm, er ist der, der mit seiner Ehefrau zusammen ähm, viele Calls macht auf Go Live, der seit Jahren die Harmonix Pitchfork Strategie ähm, traded, entwickelt hat und ist auch ähm, berechtigt im Forex Pro Pack am Start, ist im Harmonix Tool. Und da unser Mann ja gedacht wurde, ein bisschen private ähm, Sachen am Klären hat, habe ich mir überlegt, ich muss meinem I am Germany Team was ganz, ganz Spezielles vorstellen. Und wer am Samstag bei der Super Saturday äh, Zoom Session nicht am Start war, der darf heute sich diese Informationen in diesem persönlichen Zoom Call von unserem großartigen Go Life Educator ähm, sich heute hier holen. Und für die mehr wünsche ich euch hier viel Spaß. Ähm, macht gerne Stories, sei es von mir, ich habe meinen Namen eingeblendet, wie auch später vom Chance, ihr werdet ihn auch auf Insta finden. Ähm, Verlockt uns, gönnt uns, uns eine Story, macht euch Notizen, schaut auch später an, wo ist dieses Tool. Ähm, folgt ihn auf Pip Talk und so weiter und so fort. So now my Mr. Go Life Educator, I want to change to English. I think you don't understand anything I taught on German, but um, I told you are so an amazing um, Go Life Educator, amazing Harmonics Forex, um, Pitchforks Educator, and I am amazing. I'm grateful. I'm proud. I'm very happy to have you here on my I am Germany Harmonics Zoom call. So yeah, I'm wanna, excited to be here. So I want to thank you for your time. Um, not so many um, students here on the call, but we make a recording, so uh, most of them can watch the recording after our session. Um, there are also so many sessions at the, at the same time, so, but I think that people who want to know you, who want to learn you, I want to see this amazing strategy are here now on this call. So you are my co-host, host. you are <laughs> unmuted, so I think you can share your screen. Um, tell us who you are, where we find you, where's your pip talk, where are all informations the students need, and Perfect. have fun, and thank Perfect. you very yeah. much. 100%, yeah. You know, I appreciate everyone for hopping on here today. Hopefully you guys can understand me better than, yeah, I couldn't understand the intro, and I gotta be honest, it was one of those first times that I'm sitting on the call and I'm like... This is like the last time I, I was in this position, it was when I first started trading Forex and I couldn't understand the lingo, I couldn't understand anything, but uh, man, I'm excited to be here. I appreciate every single one of you who hopped on here today to spend some time with me. And um, I'm gonna go over a little bit of my background just so you guys can have a, a touch about me. And then my goal today is to teach you guys how to trade with the Pitchfork Scanner and how to how to take advantage of what I do on a daily basis. Even if you never get on one of my go live sessions, I'm going to be dropping what I call look alerts into the telegram. Me and Rob already talked about it. I drop them in uh, to my pit talk. Currently I do it in the New York and the Asian London session every single day. So by the end of this call, at least you'll know when you see that pop up in the telegram, you're going to be like, Oh, I know how to use these levels and I know how to take advantage of it. So that's the plan here guys. Just, just a 10 second overview on me. 
And I got started trading seven years ago and I got started trading with this company. When I got started, the only educator on the platform was Christopher Terry. So I learned a ton of stuff right off the bat, all from Chris Terry. Um, fast, and, and maybe you guys know, I'm not sure uh, team wise where you guys are, uh, but I came over here with Matthew Rosa and Jason Brown. Does anyone know them? Thumbs up uh, for you guys. You guys know who Matthew Rosa and Jason Brown are? Yep. All right. So they're, they're the, they're the day ones. I came over with them first. Uh, I was one of the first people they brought in. I was in a previous company with them and I was kind of getting fed up of selling things to be honest. And I, I came to Matt and Matt's like, bro, I can't tell you about this, but I got to show you this Forex thing. And, um, you know, three weeks later, we moved uh, over here to IM and the rest is history. But, um, but yeah, so I got started right in the get. I did the team building thing for quite a while. Um, I think the highest rank I hit was Platinum 2000. I've signed up over 400 personal people to my team uh, over the course of the seven years. And it's just one of those things that the building side wasn't really for me. I loved educating and I love serious people. If you guys are building the teams, you know how it can be. You're going to get people in. Some are all about it and some are ready to crush and the others aren't. <laughs> and the beautiful part about being an IM educator is I'm blessed every single day that I get the people who are really about it. I get to work with people who want their own success. I don't have to call up any one of you guys. I see Alex. I, I just, man, I'm sorry. I'm going to pick on you only because I can, I can pronounce your name. I don't even want to try the other ones and mess it up here, but I don't have to call up Alex before this call and say, bro, you've got to get on this call. He's here because he wants to be here. And every single person that's on this call right now, you're here because you want to be here. And you're the people I like to work with. To be completely honest, you're the only people I like to work with because it's people like you that I know when I give you the information that we're going to pass on here and what we're going to go over, you're going to take it, you're going to execute on it, and you're going to continue to improve yourself with it. And that's what this is all about. So let's hop into it. Like I said, that's enough about me. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you guys all about my life story. It's, <laughs> it's, it's been interesting, but let, you guys are here to learn about trading. So let's talk about trading. So I'm just going to go through this quick overview. I know some people, um, I know some people were on the Saturday marathon, some people weren't. So I'm going to go over the basics of our strategy here real quick, just so you guys can understand it. And um, I guess before we do that, let me talk about who this strategy is for. This strategy is for the people who want to be day traders. I call it interest session trading. So why I call it interest session trading is because it's a hybrid of scalping and then intraday trading. So we're really focused on one major session. So for the person who has a schedule that doesn't quite, maybe it's not the same consistently, or maybe it just works out that you can trade one session a day, whether it's the Asian session, whether it's a London session, whether it's a New York session, whatever session works for you, you want to, that's, that's what our strategy is for. The person who can sit down for one to two hours a day, look at the charts, find high quality setups, and then take high ROI trades. My whole focus is return on my trade. I want high risk to reward. Honestly, I'll be real with you. I don't care about pip count. Like, you know, people will always come to me and say, Chance, I caught 100 pips. And my first question is, what kind of stop loss did you use? Because if you caught 100 pips with 100 pips stop loss, that's one-to-one -one risk reward. And it's like, Okay, that's still better than a loss. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, if we go catch 100 pips with our strategy, that's risk reward 1 to 10. And the profits are way different from 1 to 1 and 1 to 10. So I'm going to go through this here. And just to give you guys a quick look at um, why I trade with Pitchforks. And I know you guys trade already. A lot of you guys use Ignite, which is an amazing tool. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite tools on the platform outside of Pitchforks. And then the DeLorean is the other one that I use with Ignite. Um, but <laughs> this is something that I trade the way I trade because it works for me. So I'm going to give you this information. I'm going to show you how to do it. And if you get to the end of this call and you go trade this on, you know, you go trade for two, three months trying this out and you get to the end and you say, yo, Chance, this isn't for me. Don't beat yourself up about it. But the one thing that I always suggest is to try and experiment with new things to figure out what does work best for you. So why do I trade this? 
opportunities available throughout the day. Like I already said, I, I've, before I, uh, you know, really started trading. Um, yeah. You know, before I started trading and was successful at, it, I was a fry cook before this. So when I started my journey, I was a fry cook, you know, flipping burgers, uh, um, at a local small town bar and grill. And I was going to community college. So I didn't have a lot of time. And one thing that I know working with the, the students that I work with is you're probably ha you probably have a crazy busy schedule as well and you're trying to fit forex into it the best part about this strategy is wherever you can sit down to the markets this is going to work for you the one the one little caveat i do put here is besides the start of the new forex day so whenever the new forex day starts for you it's 5 p.m eastern time um is is the time for you know that's what everyone knows here in america but whatever that is for you I don't trade about two hours before that and about two to three hours after that because that's when spreads go crazy. To be honest with you guys, that's when brokers try to take advantage of traders. Like I've been in trades where I've been up 40 pips and I got a 10 pip stop profit in and the spread on my trade goes to 37, 52 pips like in, in a second. And it takes me out of the trade and price went nowhere near my actual stop profit. But because that new day, the brokers just go crazy with everything. Plus that's when swaps and extra fees are added on. And I try to avoid paying all the fees I can. Um, the second one here is the risk to reward. We are already talking about that. But if you look in the bottom left corner, here's a quick example. If you took this same exact trade, so got the same exact entry, and you caught 50 pips. So this is what I was saying. If somebody came to me and said, chance, I caught 50 pips. If person number one took that with a 25 pip stop loss, if you guys don't know how to find the percentage profit of your trade, all you have to do is you take the risk to reward times the percentage you risk. So in this case here, I risk 2% per trade. That's my preference. Um, obviously, if you want to risk 1%, 3%, I really don't suggest risking much more than 3%, but I like 2% risk per trade. So if you risk 2% on this trade, you times that by two, that means you catch 50 pips, you make 4% profit. Same exact entry, but a smaller stop loss, you catch that same 50 pips, but with a risk reward of five, now I make 10% profit. So I'm making an extra 6% on the same entry, on the same take profit. The only difference was my accuracy and we get that accuracy from the pitchforks. Now, the last thing here is more opportunities inside bigger moves. Now there's levels to this and you look over here on the far right, there's a type of trader where you're trying to take all four of these trades and you're gonna stack in and you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna end this thing with like a 500 pip trade. That's amazing. Amazing. And I got students who do that. And I got students that we only take maybe the second entry. So if you look at like these two over here, they might take this first one and then the second one and ride it all the way up, which is awesome. And we're actually uh, hint hint on our go live session tonight. I'm going to be talking about stacking into trades. So that's uh, that might be something to check out if you're more interested in that. But the other cool part is that there are four trades here. And that's the coolest part to me, because if you were at work for this first trade, you were sleeping for the second, and you only had time to sit down for this third trade, boom, you had a profitable trade ready for you when you sat down to the market. So that's really cool, in my opinion. Now, next thing we're going to talk about here is just the four simple steps. So please write these down in your notebooks. We're going to go over them in the charts. I'm going to show you how to use it with the cheat sheet. I'm going to put it all together for you. But I just want to cover this real quick so everyone's on the same page. Every single trade I take has to have a pitchfork on it. So when I go through these four simple steps, step number one, that question is, is price at a pitchfork level? If that answer is yes, I can move on. That answer is no, I do not care about that pair. I trade every single currency pair. There's not a currency pair that I am scared to trade. I will trade every single currency pair. I favor certain currency pairs at certain times. Occasionally, I might favor, um, for example, if I'm trading in the Asian session, I would rather trade AUD JPY than trade USD CAD because the USD Canadian are asleep and the AUD and the JPY are awake. So that's just a little like I do select the pairs I trade based on the time of day. But outside of that, you're going to have so many different setups with the pitchfork scanner. There's no reason to worry about looking at trades that aren't next to our pitchfork. So is price at a pitchfork? If the answer is yes, we move down. Second question, is quarter theory within seven pips of our pitchfork entry? If that answer is yes, quarter theory is going to be one of our main confirmations. 
If that answer is no, you're going to know that you're going to have to find the one minute trend, which is step number four. All right. So when we're looking at our strategy, I do use multi time frame analysis. So what that simply means is I'm taking the information from the one hour chart and I'm executing on the information on the one minute chart. I need that information to match or I don't take the trade. So my first two steps, you can see over here, my first two steps are to locate the reversal zones in the market. So based on the pitch work, based on the quarter theory, I'm going to be able to tell where the higher time frame moves are going to come from. And then based on step three and four, I'm going to read the in the market momentum. So the actual momentum that's happening right now on the one minute chart, that's what I'm going to be watching here. And that's going to help me actually know when it's time to pull the trigger and get into a trade. So step three, that's when we drop down to the one minute chart. Is price above or below the orange line? That's our 62 EMA. You'll see that when we pull up the pitchfork scanner. And then again here, if step two is a no, then we're going to find that one minute trend and then ask ourselves, is price above or below it? And last thing here, if the confirmations are closer together, that is better for us as traders. So that's, that's, uh, that's important. Stop loss placement here real quick. And, and guys, if I'm going too fast, I will have some time at the end for Q&A. Um, so definitely make sure you write your questions down in your notebooks as we go. And then feel free to drop them in at the end. Like I said, I know a lot of you guys saw this same slideshow on Saturday. So I don't want to go, I don't want to waste too much time here. But I do want to just go through for the few people who were not on Saturday. So where to place stop losses? Simply, our goal is to use 10 pip stop losses on faster moving pairs, GBP, JPY, Euro NZD, GCAD, GJ, those type of pairs. Um, that is going to be a possibility of using 15 pip stop losses. I still on fast moving pairs would like to use a 10 pip stop loss, but I allow myself that extra five pip cushion um, on occasion. Also, keep spread in mind. Keep spread in mind. This is huge. Trading a fast pair like Euro NZD, some brokers might have an eight pip spread on Euro NZD. Well, if you have an eight pip spread, personally, I just wouldn't trade that pair. Like I would just throw Euro NZD off to the side um, and just say like I'm not going to trade this pair because you can't use ten pip stop losses with eight pip spreads. It doesn't. It doesn't work. Trust me. You're going to have a stop loss quicker than you can really even <laughs> hit enter. So next thing here. Stop loss should be three pips plus spread above or below pitchfork. So that's what we're showing here in this second image. So you got your three confirmations and I will take some time and show you this, but the way I really like to think of it is think of your confirmations as three brick walls. So your confirmations are three brick walls and I need three brick walls between my entry and my stop loss so that if I'm wrong, price is going to break through one brick wall, like our 62 EMA. And so look at this right here. You see how price goes up and then it pulls down and notice how it breaks through my orange line. It breaks through this red dash line. That's our quarter theory level, but it gets down to our pitch for our third and final brick wall. And it reverses off that brick wall and we're good to go. We don't get stop losses hit. If it breaks all three brick walls, you hit a stop loss. That's part of the game. If somebody told you that you're never going to lose a trade as a Forex trader, I'm sorry, but they were wrong. You are going to lose trades and that is okay. That's why we care about risk to reward. So I have these three, uh, these three levels here, these three brick walls. And again, with our pitchfork here on the bottom, I make sure there's at least three pips plus spread for a little cushion because last thing you want to happen is price come back, tag your last level, and then that stops you out because sometimes people put their stop loss right on that pitchfork level. That is a no. Give there a little bit of cushion there. The other option right here, if your pitchfork isn't that final confirmation, this first image, you see our 62 EMA and our pitchfork are right here. That's one, two brick walls. Our third brick wall is this quarter theory right here. And I'm going to leave that slight cushion above that quarter theory because, again, if price breaks my two brick walls and does this, you see what it did here the first time it came up, it rejected off that quarter theory level. When it rejected that quarter theory level, if that stopped me out, I would be so upset. So that's where we want to leave that cushion here as well. And simply put, this is the last thing, and then we're going to hop into the charts. And I'm going to show you guys what, uh, what we can take advantage of here in the future. But 
take profits. This is a big thing. Entering is important. We need to get into trades. <laughs> we also need to get out of trades. And how we get out of trades is basically using two key levels. So like I said earlier, I'm focused on the higher time frame when it comes to my entry levels. I use a pitchfork and I use quarter theory. So at take profit, I do the same exact thing. Now, I don't set take profit levels. That's one thing that I, I am, I'm, I'm, I don't like take profit levels unless I'm going to bed. I think I shared this story on Saturday. I share it all the time, but I think everyone needs to hear it. You might need to hear it again. One time I got into a trade and I had this mindset, like, I don't need to take profits. I'm going to let this thing go forever. I went to bed. I woke up. I was stock profited out of my trade. So I go do my back testing and I back test after every single trade I take. You don't know what the term back testing means. Simply, I go back to the markets anywhere from eight to 16 hours later. Don't do your back testing five minutes after you got out of the trade. There's going to be no data for, for you to learn from. You got to give the market time and then go back and look at that trade. You can learn from there. So I got into this trade. I went to bed, woke up. I go back and look at it. And that trade was in over 200 pips of profit. And it made just a huge V. And it came right back down and hit my stop profit. And because I had no take profits, you know, I just I didn't get any of the profit. Like, I'm like, man, if only I could have just like had to wake up for a bathroom break or something in the middle of the night. But no, nope, I slept all the way through and I missed out on all that profit. So ever since that day, I always put take profits as far if I'm going to bed. For some of you guys that might be going to work and you can't check your phone, maybe it's going to the gym, maybe it's going on a long drive and you know you can't check your phone. If you can't look at your trades, Put it take profit because you don't. I would rather have come back to that trade and only profited 50 pips instead of one pip, you know, even though it could have been 200. But if you're asleep, you know, it doesn't matter. So, how we're going to find our take profit levels is again, quarter theory, pitch for quarter theory. You can see it right here. And how I trade it if I'm watching the trade. So, this would be about 90% of my trades. I'm gonna watch price get to my key level. And if it stalls out and starts to reverse off my key level, I get out of the trade. If price breaks and retouches my key level, I allow it to continue to ride. And then if it breaks and retouches again, I allow it to continue to ride. And eventually it's gonna to get to a key level, stall out and turn around, boom, that's when I'm getting out of the trade. All right, so. That's just a simple breakdown. If you guys don't know how to get to the Pitchfork scanner, it's uh, it's just going to the harmonics.im. Once you log in here, you click strategies, you select Pitchforks. All right, so just a quick understanding of how this works, man. This drop did happen today. I'll be honest, I was looking for the buy setup here based on the, the lower time frame momentum, but man, see how that thing just stopped at our Pitchfork. And I'll break this down for you guys and you'll see how it works. But like, Look at that thing. That's that came up and it hit a brick wall. One, two, three, four, five rejections perfectly off our pitchfork. It turned around and this we're on the 15 minute chart right here. 50 pit drop, 50 pit drop in one hour. That's what I'm talking about. One to five risk reward in one hour. Those are the kind of setups we want to catch. All right. So just a basic overview. If you've never seen this before and it's your first time on this screen, our pitchforks are going to be pre-drawn for you. Everything you see here is going to be pre-drawn for you. So all the confirmations, everything, it's all here. Now, what I want you guys to pay attention to is over here on the right-hand side, you're going to see these currency pairs, and you're going to see all these currency pairs with the gold square. That gold square represents what I consider the hit list. That's just a term I call it. Essentially, what a hit list is, is the highest quality trade opportunities for that session coming up. So it's gonna merge with what I drop here in our PIP talk. And you can see like, I'll show you guys last night. So I dropped this after our session. And you can see, I put out these look alerts and then all these pairs are gonna match up with the pairs that you see right here. So with these pairs, you're gonna know these are gonna be the most likely pairs to find trades with based on our pitchfork strategy. Now, obviously this CAD JPY, you can see it's already pulled out of that zone. And that green zone, just FYI, that green zone is going to be your entry zone. Um, it doesn't mean buy or sell. It means you gotta watch the confirmations in there, but most likely the entry is gonna be in that area. So like in this case here, you see how this thing is dropped? Well, for the Asian London session, Here's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll just give you guys a little teaser. That's where it's going to be. The next move on this pair is going to be right off this pitch for quarter theory level. So what's that mean for me as a trader? Right now, absolutely nothing. 
And what I would do to find this setup and to go find this trade is I put what I consider a look alert. So I find a level, that level I would do like 100.03. 100 so it'd just be a couple pips above my quarter theory. I'll put a line here so you guys can see. It'll be roughly, and yeah, maybe four. It'll be right here, this blue line. I'll put an alert right there at that level. And that's what I send in these look alerts. I forgot to put the date and time on this, or the, the session and the date, but this was this morning. You can see this morning we had a full list of pairs. So these look alerts, and again, that's what this blue line is. I put those look alerts and they just tell me this is when you need to look at this pair. If you guys don't know how to set alerts, there's two ways to do it. If you have a paid version of TradingView, all you have to do is come over here. <laughs> you can see my alerts were going off after I was done trading this morning. Um, all you have to do is come over here, right click, click add alert. Now, if you've never set an alert, make sure you have this, uh, the TradingView app downloaded to your phone and make sure you are logged in. You have to be logged into the same account or this won't work, but you can click notify on app and then you'll get a pop-up on your app that will say, hey, look alert. So I just would, so literally how I do this. So this is EuroCAD. I just go here, I copy this. I go over here and I just right click alert and I just click paste right here. And then I have my look alert. That's what I set it at. Make sure to notify on apps on, make sure show pop-ups on. That's just going to pop up on your screen. I don't do the email and stuff, but if you guys want to, you could get it sent to your email and then you just simply click create. And now once that creates, so you can see this is that level that we are looking for price to get to. You notice today it didn't. So did I take a trade on EuroCAD today? Absolutely not. I didn't because it didn't pull down to my zone. So I didn't even look at EuroCAD. I just set the alert and I walked away. So we're going to do the same thing here with this CAD JPY. I would put the alert right here and then we just wait. And this is a beautiful part. You don't have to stare at the charts because I don't know about you, but when I stare at the charts, anxiety kicks in. And then I start thinking, oh, well, maybe it's ready or maybe this or maybe that or, you know, the thought of, oh, well, if it's going to go down to this level anyways, let me just enter a cell right here and I'll try to catch an extra. No, 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 no. Get all those thoughts out of your head. I put my alert here. Wait for price to get into this key zone. Once price triggers my alert, then we're good to go. Look for your trade entry here. And then once you find it, we'll take advantage of it. Now, let's talk about some trade opportunities here. And I just want to go through these steps with you guys. And then we're going to uh, then we're gonna go over the uh, um, the questions. So guys, get your questions ready. We are gonna we are gonna drop those questions in the chat here uh, shortly. Actually, if you guys want to, if you want to start dropping your questions right now in the chat, we can we can uh, just kind of start stacking them up if you want. Uh, but let's let's go in here. Let me pull up a different pair um, just because this is a brand new pitchfork, so it's kind of it's kind of fresh, which means there are still some good setups. But I want to show you guys something a little older. And this is something cool about Pitchworks too. It's not like the coolest thing in the world, but I think it's kind of nifty. Um, if you look at this pair, this Pitchfork started back here. And this Pitchfork's 90 days old. So these Pitchforks are accurate for an extremely long time. The oldest Pitchfork I've ever traded was over like 350 days old. So, I mean, it can be crazy, crazy old Pitchforks and they still give you super accurate levels. So this is GBP USD. This is a, a quality pair that I, I definitely like to trade in the Asian London session. And let me just find an opportunity zone We'll, we'll just go back here. I'll just go back here and, and I can almost guarantee I'll be able to find a trade set up in this zone. So let me just go right here and then I'll drop down to the one minute chart. Now, one thing you're going to see happen because this is a 90 day old pitchfork and we're working on this, but there is going to be sometimes a slight glitch. And that slight glitch, you notice how the pitchfork is no longer sitting in the middle of this green box. The reason for that is simply because when you drop down to the one minute chart, it pre-prints about two weeks worth of candlesticks on the one minute chart. 90 days is way more than, than uh, two weeks worth of candlesticks. So we just click this bottom left corner. It'll give you this little calendar. And then you just drop back. I normally just drop back to January 1st because that'll pretty much cover everything. And then you just click that little arrow. So now what's happening is all those little one minute candlesticks are being printed all the way back to January 1st. So it takes a couple minutes uh, occasionally on this, 
but trust me, it's worth the time because this is how we get our extreme accuracy. And this is how we're able to actually trade on the one minute chart with accuracy. So once it, you see how it pops back here, all you got to do is the bottom right corner here and it'll just scroll you all the way back. And then you see how that pitchfork is sitting perfectly in the middle of our green rectangle. That's how you know that that, that trade, uh, that pitchfork has fixed its glitch. So just a heads up on that one. I know it's frustrating and trust me, the programmers have been trying to work on it. And it's just been one of those things that trading you doesn't allow us to preset how many candlesticks it goes back. So we're working on that. Hopefully in the scanner 2.0, we'll be able to do <laughs> all right there we go all right so i think we're good right yeah yep okay so here's here's just a little setup here and i'll just talk about this because this is this is very basic and there's one thing that was not on the slideshow that i do want to add in here and it's the background color so very simple red background means you're in a downtrend blue background means you're in an uptrend so what i want you guys to take note of over here in the top right corner you're going to see this little icon select this checklist icon so when you select that checklist icon it's going to pop this up and this is going to be your little cheat sheet right so this is going to be your cheat sheet to what you're actually going to be finding in these trades so how this would look is let's say price is currently right here for example sake let's say price is right here so where would i put my look alert it'd be right about here at that blue line so i would put it in that blue line i'd wait 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 ding price triggers my alert now i'm waiting for this move to happen what move do i want to see I want to see price break, I want to see price retouch, and I want to see price push away. That's the setup that I'm personally looking for. So inside these setups, you're going to see, let me get rid of that look alert. So if I know this is, you know, if I know this is a play that's coming, one thing I ask myself in step two, you guys remember step two here? Hopefully you guys got good notes, you already know. But what's that number? Seven pips. Is my quarter theory seven pips from my pitchfork? So that's the first thing I'm going to check because this red line is my quarter theory level. And if you guys are unfamiliar with quarter theory, it's simply just mathematical support and resistance. All right. So just think of it as a support and resistance level. And I'm going to measure is this seven pips away? And it's actually five pips away. So that means I'm not taking this trade until price is underneath this level. So we have to look at price and we got to see exactly how this thing is going to play out. So I'm going to find a trend. You don't always have to find the trend, but I like to kind of just find the trend so I can feel for what the market's doing here on the one minute chart. And if you guys are new to trend line drawing, I like to just connect the wicks and connect as many touches as possible. So I got one, two touches, three touches four touches and it's okay. I know people are going to be like chance, bro. It broke through your trend line there by a couple of pips. That's okay. Um, I'm, I never look at any line in the Forex markets as perfect. When I look at this trend line, what my eyes actually see is this. They see that. Like that's got like a two, three pit cushion on each side. That's, that's that level. So it's not always going to be perfect, but as long as it's kind of in that range, you can get a decent feel for the trend line here. So looking at this setup, you want to see this thing break retouch push away now if you got super excited on this trade you might have pulled the trigger right here getting a little excited and i could see kind of where you see this trade and we'll talk about why I and mean, let's just say you took this trade because i, I want to show you a loss too i don't if you guys have never been on my sessions, I'm not the guy who uh, just, I, I don't have pre-prepared charts that I'm going to go through with you. All I do is I hop on the charts, I go through my confirmations, and I teach from what we see. So this is a loss. This is a trade that would would have given you a loss. That's okay. We can We can bounce back from losses. And we'll show you just how the confirmations play out here. If you're looking at this direction, we got our downtrend, background is red. And then if price at this case, it's underneath my pitchfork, so it gets a check. It's underneath my quarter theory, so it gets a check. It's underneath my orange line, so it gets a check. It's underneath my trend, so it gets a check. So all of that goes into account. I enter this trade. Now, 
for this particular trade, why I don't like this in particular is because A, your trend line is not a confirmation because your stop loss would have had to be 20 pips to cover your trend line. So I'd have to go back here and I'd have to take off my trend line. That's not a confirmation because it's not between my entry and stop loss. Next thing here is if I'm looking at this like this, um, if you look right here, it's got quarter theory, that's one, it's got pitchfork and it's got your 62 EMA barely. If I measure the distance between these confirmations, it's 9.3 pips. That's a huge spread. What I like is I like these three confirmations within three to five pips is my personal preference. So if you took this trade, yes, the confirmations did tell you to take it. So you could have taken it and you probably would have lost. The difference of where I prefer to take this trade and where, where this setup is a lot better is right over here. And why is this trade better here? Well, it's better because now we have four confirmations because your trend's in play. And all four of those confirmations are within 5.8 pips. So that's fine. 5.8 pips and four confirmations. So this is actually where I would have entered the trade. Now, after I enter the trade, I normally allow price to go about 15 to 20 pips before I put a stop profit in play, or else I allow two pullbacks. What are my two pullbacks? In this case right here, this would be pullback one, and it tries to go down again. This would be pullback two, and then it goes down again. And then after those two pullbacks, I put a stop profit in place. No matter where price is at here, whether it's at 15 pips or if it's at 10 pips, Anywhere once it gets past that 10, 15 pips after my two pullbacks, I'm throwing a stop profit in place. So in this case right here, your stop profit would be sitting right about here. Just one pip in profit is what I do with my stop profits. All right, right there, boom. And then as you see this thing play out, I'm just gonna zoom out here. Price comes all the way down and it gets to about 30 pips to 38 pips max. But realistically, if you could have got out anywhere down here around 30 pips, that's a one to three risk to reward. And when you start doing the math for what you need, um, when you start doing the math for what you need out of your trades and out of your week, it's up to you on what your goals are. But if you could walk away from the week with a one to five risk reward, you're going to be sitting in a pretty good place. <laughs> that's, that's a good place to be. So if you can catch one to three risk reward out of one trade, this is a beautiful trade. And this isn't the best trade in the world. I could have found a better trade where I showed you. I think on Saturday, we went over a trade that went like 95 pips or something crazy. Like those trades, the 95 pip trades are out there and we can find them. But this trade that I'm showing you right here today is the consistent trade that you can find with our pitchfork scanner and this is the type of trades that i want you guys to be able to take and not only take but consistently profit on so with that being said we are going to move into the q a here i know i just went over one pair if if your question is chance can you go over more pairs the answer is yes just drop that question in there but it's all we've already been going for about 40 minutes and i just want to uh i just want to see where you guys are at if things are making sense if you got any questions but just a quick quick recap here before i start looking at the questions and if you guys are in the chat you guys can drop the question in the chat or if you want to uh, unmute yourself in a couple minutes here you could do that as well but the main thing I want you guys to understand, so I'm going to be dropping this in the Telegram chat. I'm going to be dropping our look alerts right here. Also, you can go subscribe to our Pip Talk, and you can grab these in Pip Talk. Again, and I have my little write-up here. These are not signals. These are just look alerts. But what I would suggest you do is go through this list and find the pairs you want to trade. I give you this whole list, realizing that out of this whole list, maybe two or three, maybe four setups are actually going to take place. But this is a list of pairs that I thought have potential for a quality setup. I would go through, I'd set all those alerts on your trading view, or I forgot to talk about the other option. The other option is call levels. Um, there's a free app called Call Levels that you can download, and you can set your alerts on the Call Levels app as well. And then once those alerts go off, all you got to do is pull up the Pitchfork scanner, watch price, and fill out this checklist. Once this checklist, you have the trend, the direction, and then a pitchfork's a must. So we have to have the direction and we have to have a pitchfork. After that, if we can get two of these four confirmations right here to say, in this case, sell, or if it was an uptrend, we would need two out of those, uh, those four options to say buy. 
if you can get two of those four options to go with it, then you're good to take the trade. And that's the most basic understanding of our strategy. If you guys want to learn more about our strategy, we do go live three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So today is our last day of the week for go live. And we go live at 10 p.m. Eastern time. So I know that's like 5 a.m. for you guys, Berlin time. And here's the best information. If you can't get up or don't want to get up at five, here's what I want you to do. I want you to check in to these alerts right when you wake up and you can go set the alerts. And I would say about half the alerts I said should still be good for London Open. So that's that's good news is what right away you can find my alerts in pit talk you can copy those alerts in and you can still trade them Second thing is I would suggest you watch the recording. I would say 90% of the value that I drop on Go Live has nothing to do with the live markets. It has everything to do with the future markets and education. So if you can't hop on live, totally understand. Um, actually, like just before we hopped on this call, I was listening to something. I get up at 6.30 a.m. And I was listening to something that was like, you got to get up at 4 a.m., start your day, beat everybody type of thing. So I literally, before we started this call, switched my uh, my alarm from, from 6.30 a.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> now I'm getting up at 4 a.m. Uh, so, you know, maybe you guys want to make that switch and hop on live. But again, there's no problem with going through the recorded session you're going to get all the value and again those those look alerts are still going to be 100 valid by the time you wake up so i would definitely set those first thing you guys do in the morning and then last thing before we hop into the questions so you guys start dropping your questions in the chat or if you guys want to just raise your hand if you got a question you actually want to verbally ask just raise your hand um it'll get not not physically like you don't have to physically raise your hand um but if you go down below in your little uh, zoom screen there'll be an option to raise your hand um so that we can just call on you so everyone doesn't just unmute at once uh but but uh the last thing i want to say is the favorited sessions on our channel are going to walk you through tons of value and tons of education so if you like what you see here and you're like well chance i, I i'm going to get on today's call but i'm not going to be able to see the rest Go through the favorited sessions this weekend. There's so much value in there. It's going to really help you out. All right. Um, you said there's, I'm going to hop into the questions right now. So you said there are two ways of setting an alert. What's the second one? Yep. So that, that's my bad. Thank you for asking a good question because I did forget to finish that. So it is going to be, uh, it is going to be call levels is the name of the free app. Uh, call levels is the name of that. Do you go, uh, do you also give out some ideas on your go live session? So I go over the hit list for the Asian London session. So most of the time, uh, based on when our session is, um, based on when our session is, there's not a lot of great trades. Occasionally, there might be a couple Asian sessions set up. Like we had last week, we had AN that made a beautiful move during our call. But yes, I go through and I go through the look alerts. So I'll, this list of uh, this list of pairs that I dropped right here, this list of pairs, what I'll do, and actually it'll be on the Asian London session because I don't run a New York session anymore. I used to, but don't do that no more. Um, so I, I'll go over every single one of these setups. So last night I went over all seven of these setups. I showed you exactly what we're looking for, the exact confirmations we're looking for. And what I do, because you guys know on Go Live, we can't, we're, we don't call signals. So we're only education based on there is I go through them at the start of my calls so that if you wanted to trade while you're learning and while you're doing the education, because I get on go live almost definitely every week, almost every day, I get on go live. You know what I do when I'm on go live as a as a student because I'm still learning. I'm still like I said, I, I'm still learning. I'm still I'm still trying to better myself. So when I get on go live as a student, I'm trading. So I kind of just assume that when you guys are on go live as a student, you're trading as well. So the first thing I do then on the call is I'll go through these pairs. I'll go through these setups. I'll show you the high quality setups and then I'll go into my education and then you can take that information and maybe you got dual screens, maybe you got a separate window pulled up and then you can watch those pairs and wait for that actual execution to take place. Um, to, to always be a student. That's a fact. Um, how long have you been with IM? So seven years now, seven years, I think. Like literally we got started with a company when there was less than a thousand people in the entire company. 
So there's less than a thousand people when I got started. Now there's more than a thousand people in Germany. And it's like, it's just crazy that, yeah, it is crazy. It's crazy. So I've been with it since the, since the get. And uh, man, like, like just to show you how small the company, I'll stop sharing my screen real quick. Um, and we'll just, we'll just chat for a minute, but to tell you guys how small the company was when I got started to go to uh, the first convention I went to in Dallas to get into the VIP dinner with Chris Terry, which is now like, you know, chairman 10, like even chairman 25 and above, all you had to be was a platinum 600. So as a platinum 600, I got to go to the VIP dinner and I got like all these perks as a platinum 600 that today you got to be like a chairman 25 for. Um, and it's just because the company had less than a thousand people. So there was, I remember when we had our first chairman in the company. So yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, should be done again. Yeah. Yeah. If we did that again, we need to like rent out the whole stadium just to eat. Because uh, we have so many P600, which is amazing, but it just shows you how the company has grown. And I mean, it's been it's been something for me uh, that's that's just been mind blowing. You know, we ran the call on Saturday, and the fact that I'm on the call with all you guys in Germany right now blows my mind. Like, I come from my hometown had less than a thousand people in it in small town Illinois. Like, I grew up in the middle of cornfields. So the fact that I'm blessed and honored to be able to just talk to you guys right now is it's just mind blowing to me. So yeah, it's, it's crazy to see what this company has grown into. And man, I'll tell you what, I don't know. See, it's hard for me as an educator because I'm on all the behind the scenes stuff. So it's like, I don't know how much the, the public knows yet about what's coming, but man, I'll tell you what, this company is in a direction that's, that just blows my mind every day because the truth of it is like when you have less than a thousand customers, we were just a little mom and pop shop. And to the size and the and the scale that this company is now, and now the people that Chris has been hiring. And that's one thing, you know, I, I have my other businesses and stuff too. And the one thing I've learned as an entrepreneur, it's not about what you can do. It's about who you surround yourself with. And the people that this company has been hiring and bringing onto the scene blow my mind. Every time I get on a call with them and I hear the level that they're talking and the level that they're game planning, Man, I got I got chills. I get excited every time I hear it, just because I know that y'all are in y'all are in great hands. And the people in charge of this company, like I just gotta say it from the from the bottom of my heart with like Chris Terry, that guy, he doesn't need this. And that's that's what I love so much is because there's so many companies and guys, I've been around seven years. You you don't think I've been hit up by every single company y'all have heard of and every other one you haven't heard of. All these companies that I've heard of and seen over the years, they're all about a quick buck. They're all about trying to run up the signups, run up a complaint so that the owner can make some money. And the reason why this company is just continually getting better year after year is because Chris isn't here about the money. He's here to take care of us. He's here to take care of me and you as students and as educators and as traders. And it's just one of those things that literally blows my mind every day that I get to work, you know, side by side with somebody like Chris Terry, who really cares about us. And, um, you know, it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing beyond belief, because again, not, not every company is like that. Not every CEO is like that. A lot of CEOs care about lining their pockets, but that's the beauty of someone like Chris, who he made his own wealth. He's not, he didn't create this company to get wealthy. He was wealthy. And then he created this company to give back to the people. And man, I respect that. Um, guys, any other questions? I mean, I got my, my schedule's clear for the next 10, 10, so 10, 15 minutes. If you guys want questions about me, questions about the journey, anything you guys want to talk about, I can pull up the charts again. What are you guys thinking? Fill, fill me in. If you guys want to unmute and chat for a minute, I, I love getting on these calls. They, and and <laughs> Rob was like, oh man, it's like a little smaller than I was expecting to be real. These are my favorite calls. Like, you know, we can run the call like Saturday. We had, you know, hundreds of people on that call, but these are my favorite calls because I can look and I can see your faces and I can see the people who are really putting in the grind to make this stuff happen. Um, are you at to buy to you? Um, Am I going to Dubai? I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to Dubai, but I will be at Phoenix. Um, the Phoenix convention, I will be there. I, I'm definitely going to be at the Phoenix convention, but I don't know if I'm going to make it to Dubai. There's a lot of, man, like with those, oh, they're, they're focused on a lot of the, um, the outside of America educators. So I'm probably just going to let the um, ones take it. How old are you? Um, yeah, I'm 26. I'm 26. So it feels like I've lived, honestly, it feels like I lived 10 lives because 
when uh, I'll just, we got a little time for story time. When I first got started, like I was living in my parents' house, you know, I didn't, I didn't have nothing. <laughs> like it was, I was struggling. I was literally living it with mom and dad. And when I, when trading started to work for me, I went from living with mom and dad to traveling and me and my now wife, Sam, she's my fiance at the time. We lived in a new state every single month across the U S and we lived in a new state and we hopped Airbnb to Airbnb every single month. So we lived everywhere from Florida to California, everywhere in between, just traveled and man, we just lived life. And it was so fun. And it was such a, such a journey. And then once we became educators and like, our life was kind of getting more serious. The traveling thing was just a little too crazy. We were like, we need, we need somewhere to call home. So we, we, our dream was to move out to Miami. So we went out to Miami. We got a 41st floor, you know, 30, 41st floor penthouse on the ocean, everything I could ever dreamed of. And honestly, yo, I was, I was depressed because I thought money and I thought everything I could flash on the internet would make me happy. And in reality, it didn't make me happy. So it was cool for six months. I ain't gonna lie. For the first six months, I was like living on cloud nine. And then after those six months, I was like, man, I need something different. So we decided after a year out there in Miami, we decided to move out to Denver for a little while. And then we honestly, we, we moved out here to Missouri, um, which is just small, middle of nowhere, cattle country. We, we got some property, got some land. And, and now what, what, what fills me up is we just had our first baby. So she's five, almost six months, which is crazy to think about. So, you know, we're starting a family. I, I like the quiet life. I love going outside and looking at my cows in the pasture. I love just like, we got a pond that I can go fish whenever I want. I can go, you know, I can do what I want when I want out here. And um, man, I love the slow life. You know, I, I thought as a country kid growing up that I wanted the fast and the excitement and the, the horns. And I mean, when we lived in Miami, you would hear a fire siren every single day. Man, out here, I don't hear nothing. Like I can go outside and just sit there for hours and I won't hear a single car. So it's one of those things that, uh, you know, it, it's I, I decided what was good for me. And I had to quit thinking of what was good for Instagram because honestly, Chance didn't want to move to Miami and live in a penthouse. Instagram did. So I did it for Instagram and wasn't fulfilled. So that's one thing definitely to, uh, that's one thing definitely to keep in mind when it comes down to what you want in your life, make sure it's for you. That's like, man, I'm a big fan of Gary V. I don't know if you guys listen to Gary V. A lot of people probably do. Um, but his big thing that he talks about is happiness. And that's the one thing that I still work on to this day is like, how am I doing what makes me happy? And, um, you know, that's what I would suggest you guys do, because I'll be real with every single person out here. Trading doesn't make me happy. It doesn't like I don't find fun sitting down to the charts and trading. Now, don't get me wrong. We catch we catch a couple hundred pips on a trade. It's pretty fun. And there are the fun moments, but I don't live for trading anymore. Trading is just part of my life. It's something I do. It's not something I live for. And that's that was me. That, that's just something I had to do. So let me uh, let me check out a couple questions in the chat. Um, how do you work on your mindset? So one thing for mindset that is huge for me is, um, I, you know, so this is for me, I read the Bible every single day. So that's one thing that I do to ground myself and, and having a higher power, whether it's God for you or whatever it is not putting all the pressure on me takes a lot of pressure off me. But also realizing like I control my own destiny. I don't just like sit in the corner and say, oh, it all happened for me. Like I still put in the grind every day, but I, I have something else that I have faith in bigger than myself. Now, the flip side of that of how do I work my brain every single day is I personally hate to read. Like, like I'm the worst reader. Like I thought I was cool because I went through all the way through school and high school without reading a book. Little did I know, like reading makes you smarter. Who would have thought? So, you know, now I, I challenge myself to read every day and I read things that are interesting to me. And I find people who are successful in my own lane. So like, man, I'm not kind of, okay. So here's what I read these days. And, and again, this is how I've changed. I read this. This is a this is a, a magazine, but it's really just an old like a newspaper on how to be a good farmer. So it has nothing to do with trading. But I read this every day. I have so find that thing for you. And then I find people who are successful, and those are the people. So I got somebody who I met. 
I met probably five years ago through IM, through trading. I brought him into my team. He has, he has since quit trading completely. He doesn't trade anymore. Um, but this guy is one of the best entrepreneurs I ever, I've ever ever met. He was a millionaire at 18 um, in real estate. He owns so much real estate, it's insane. And he got into online businesses and Amazon stores and all these other things. I talk to that guy once a week. And we have one business together now that we just started within the past couple of months. So it's not like we're doing business calls. It's not like I'm focused on business, but I talk to people who are at an extreme level of success. So, you know, that's like, you know, I, I used to talk to like a Matthew Rose and Jason Brown every day. Now they're way too busy. <laughs> they're way too busy to like to hit them up. Back in the day when they weren't even chairman yet, we, we got on calls once a day. And that's one of the things that really helped me in the beginning is I was getting on calls with Jason Brown almost every day with Matthew Rosa, almost every day. And I was just, you know, working with them, working side by side with them. So find people who can run with you, but don't limit yourself to your own, like to the Forex lane. And I think that's something that I did wrong in the beginning is like, I can only hang out with traders. I can only talk to traders. And I realized like, that's like the worst because traders, like in my opinion, I'm like, we all talk about the same stuff. You know, we can get 10 traders in the room and 10 traders are going to talk trading, trading, trading. But if you have somebody in your circle that's successful and successful doesn't mean money. I have people in my life. So, um, you know, from my church, I have three mentors right now, one from a spiritual side, one from a uh, relationship side. Uh, they, this guy's got a super marriage. He's got three amazing kids. So, and I, I mean, yeah, I, I make more money than him, but I don't think of that as like, oh, I'm better than you and I can't learn from you. No, he's, he's a superintendent. Like, so like he like is overseeing like a ton of schools, which is cool, but um, it's, it doesn't pay the best. But you think about that. I look to people that are at a high level in the areas of life I want to be in. And those are the people who I surround myself with because Reading books is cool and reading books and listening to audios and listening to podcasts and all that kind of stuff gets you in rooms with people you can't afford to get in rooms with. Let's just be real. I read Gary Vee's books. I listen to Gary Vee's videos. I've never sat down with them one-on-one. -on -one. I was listening to one of his videos. He said he turns down hundred grand to sit down with somebody for an hour. I don't got a hundred grand to give Gary Vee to sit down for an hour. And even if I did, he turns that down. So, but I can watch his content. I can read his books but you need people in your life that you can surround yourself with that are going to lift you up every single day and challenge you to think different in whatever area you want to go into. And again, like I said, I focus on all different types of things, not just, not just like, Oh, I only surround myself with business people. Like I said, I got my one business friend who I talk to him weekly because man, he keeps me sharp and he keeps challenging me in different ways. So I don't get comfortable. That's another thing. If you find yourself being comfortable, find a friend that makes you uncomfortable. Don't, it's good to make yourself uncomfortable. I hate giving this advice because like some people like, you're like, oh, all my friends aren't, <laughs> none of my friends are on the same mindset as me. Well, find new friends, <laughs> like, like you got to find those friends that are going to pull you up and, and challenge you and that want nothing from you. This friend of mine, like I'm talking about, he's never asked me for a dime. I've never sold him on nothing. I sold him on IM. I brought him into the company and, and, and he did it for a while with me, but he's never asked me for a dime, but he's given me some advice and encouragement and the times I needed it. He's helped me launch other business. Like he's done so much for me. And it's just like, it's, it's not a val We're not changing money every time we're changing that, 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 uh, I guess just the, honestly, the value of uh, having somebody to stretch you and challenge you mentally. Um, let's see here. What's your routine before you get on the charts and set entry? Yeah. Great question. So I have a quick little, I call it like a warm up routine. So this is a routine that yours doesn't have to look like mine, but it should look something like this. So actually like, are you guys good? I know some people, are you guys thumbs up if I take five minutes to just show you it on the charts? Just give me a thumbs up if everyone's cool with that. All right, perfect. You guys got to go. You got to go. I understand. But I'll just show you my routine that I do real quick here. I mean, so I, I go top down and I show myself wins. So when I get on the charts, I want to be thinking about wins, right? That's the first thing I want to think about is I want to think wins, wins, wins. I don't want to think about losses. I don't want, dang, GJ. Look at that, right off that pitchfork and just slam down. That's crazy. Um, let me find an older pair that I can do this with. So I just find any pair and I hop out here to the one hour time frame, 
and I like my warm up routine to be five to 10 minutes. So I don't want this to be huge, but I just go through here and I just circle a couple trades like, boom, there's a trade. Boom. Here's a trade. Here's a trade. Here's a trade. You know, I just go through and I circle a couple trades and I just see them. And, and then I go through, so let's, let's just say I do these four, these, you know, I, I normally do 10 to 15, but let's just say I do these four and I just identify the traits and I look at them and I see what happened here. And I'd be like, okay, so in this, this is a consolidation trade. You can see on the hour chart, the market is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But right here in this circle, you can see there's a pitchfork quarter theory right by each other. Perfect. That's I get excited when I see pitchforks and quarter theories right next to each other. I get excited. And then boom, that would have been a 46 pit trade. Awesome. Then here's another trade to the sell side on the reversal. And then I'm like, ooh, here's a 99 pit trade. But I see it, it was two days long. So I probably wouldn't have held that whole trade. So I look at it and I identify, OK, realistically, I'm catching 45 pips in four hours. And I go through here and I look at these on high on the higher times. And I, again, I try to do 10 to 15. And then I drop down to the one minute chart and I start looking at the reps. Now, again, depending on uh, depending on how much time you give yourself, I like to look at five to 10 wins on the one minute chart and I would switch currency pairs. So I do my higher time frame on one currency pair and then I would switch to a different time frame. Uh, but I'm not going to do or a different currency pair. I don't do that here. But I would just go through here. And as I scroll back, I would be like, oh, here's a trade. Boom. See that trade right there? There was an uptrend. It broke. It retouched. It shot out of the zone. My entry would have been right here. And I could have got in with a 10 pip stop loss. And I would have caught about 25-ish pips. As price consolidated here, I would have got out 25 pips. And guys, that's a daily goal for me. If I can go get 20 pips a day, five days a week, whoo, <laughs> come on, that, that's what I'm looking for. So, and then again, just rinse and repeat. Then I go back here and I'm like, ooh, how could I have caught this trade? Well, um, I wanted to enter right here. I have a slight uptrend right here. Oh, boom, there's our three confirmations. I might've waited for this break, retouch, push away, and look at how clean these three confirmations are. Ooh, this one's, this one's beautiful. Our three confirmations are within three, 2.6 pips. Anything under three, I'm like, that's the best trade you can find with our strategy. So oh, boom, 10 pip trade. And I could have held it out here and got 30 pips out of this thing. And then rinse and repeat. So that's what I do on the charts. So I do that to see the wins because I don't want to hop into the, like, I talk about it like when I, I want to brainwash myself to see winning trades. I know we don't like the term brainwashing. It's like, ah, oh, chance, I don't want to brain. No, you want to brainwash winning trades. I want them implanted into my head. So when I close my eyes, I see the winning trade. And especially before I sit down to trade, I want winning trades implanted in my brain. So I go through the higher time frame so I can, I'm IDing some setups. And then I go on the lower time frame and I ID five to 10 exact entries that I would like to take. And then I hop into the charts. So that's, that's like, I call it like the, like if you guys are basketball fans, a lot of times in basketball, you do the warm up routine. So I played basketball in high school. We did warm up routines before every game. So I do a warm up routine before I get onto the charts to trade um, because then I got the wins fresh in my head. It's just like, again, in basketball, you would take like shots and then you see the ball go in the hoop, see the ball go in the hoop, see the ball go in the hoop. Same thing for me on the charts. I want to see a winning trade see a winning trade, see a winning trade, and then let's go try to find a trade. And I got all these winning trades implanted in my head fresh for me. So I do that. And then from a mindset standpoint, I do a, I do a self-check, self-check. Make sure you're not emotional. You should not be too excited or too sad or angry getting on the charts. The sad or angry is normally easy to see. So it's actually been a year now, which is crazy. But like my grandpa passed away a year ago. When my grandpa passed away, I didn't trade for a week and a half because my mind wasn't there. Because I was traveling back home. I was spending time with family. I had all this stuff going on in my life. And I did not beat myself up and say, I have to trade. I have to fight through this because I know what's going to happen. My results are going to go down because my mind's not in the game. 
So have a self-awareness check. How am I emotionally? And then the worst thing is excited because excited turns into overtrading and, and then overtrading turns into losing lots of trades. And, and that's, that's where I used to be. I used to get on the chart like, ah, like, like I was ready to play a football game where I was just like, I'm unstoppable. And I would get all hyped and all excited. And then I would just start taking every single thing that kind of sort of looked good. Instead, now when I get on the charts, I want to be like, flat line, mellow, focused, and they're ready to execute. So that's that's kind of the mindset that I'm getting onto the charts with. I don't want either high or low affecting me. So yeah, that's it, man. Man, that's a, man, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. I didn't know we were going to get into all this stuff on this call, but hopefully y'all found value from it. Are there any last second questions before we hop off here? I, like I said, I love all the stuff we covered here today. Um, anything else we can help you with before we hop off? Yo, appreciate you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, guys. Yo, I appreciate y'all hopping on here today. Um, yeah, so anything you guys need from me, just, uh, you know, you can reach out. Rob knows how to get a hold of me, so just, just hit him up. And uh, anything else, yo, we're on go live three days a week. We'll see you on there. Make sure you guys stay plugged into our pip talk as well. All righty, yo. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys later. Have a good one, everybody. Peace out. Was soll man da noch sagen? Boah, Leute, ich hoffe, es hat euch gefallen. Mir auf jeden Fall. Ich bin richtig gehypt. Ah, der Chain ist auch schon weg. Da kommt man gerade nochmal Dankeschön sagen. Ähm, ihr habt die Information. Vielen Dank an alle, die bis zum Schluss da waren. Ähm, ich werde jetzt auch das Recording beenden. Ähm, ich lädt den gleich hoch auf YouTube. Ich wünsche euch noch einen schönen Abend. Vielen Dank, dass ihr da wart. Ähm, ihr wisst, wo ihr was findet. Wir lesen uns in den Chats. Ich wünsche euch einen schönen Abend und vielen Dank und bis bald, ihr Lieben.